I liked it more than I thought I would. I haven't seen any of the Star Wars animated stuff. What did this show feel like for you, considering you hadn't? Like, I, I, I've seen, like, clips and, like, small stuff, and I know some names, but not enough. Like, you were you were watching it and being like, that's this planet, that's yeah. this ship, that's this person. They do reference a lot of stuff. Do you feel like, um, as someone who's watched everything, do you think that this show kind of harbors on that a bit too much? Like, it's like... No, I think they actually did it pretty well. Like, tastefully? Yeah, I think because it's Dave Filoni, he, it's more he's referencing himself. What else so, he, did he write Rebels? He at all? wrote all of Rebels and he was the lead showrunner on Clone Wars 2. So he did all the animated stuff you haven't seen. He yeah. was in charge of. Mm. But he actually wrote and directed every episode, apparently, whereas with Mandalorian, John Favreau took over from that. Yeah. So this is very much his baby. So I didn't feel like he was uh, doing what episode 7 did and yeah. being like, haha, like, look at this thing, everyone, yeah. and then throw it away. He also just reused a lot of his own shots. Mm -hmm. Like I showed, I showed you just after the thing, the epilogue of Rebels, which is almost shot for shot, half of the scenes in episode yeah. one and two of Ahsoka, which is a strange move and maybe why they released two episodes. Mm -hmm. I usually feel like when they release two episodes of a show at a time, it's because they aren't confident in the first episode. They think that the first episode isn't going to keep people around and enthralled. Would you have been disappointed with episode one? I think episode one ended pretty strongly. I think yeah. episode one ended better than episode two. Yeah, did. 100%. But episode two kind of ended where the epilogue of Rebels ended. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe that's why they did it. Because it would feel weird if on the first night of release, mm. it takes you a full week to get to where you thought you were. But this is why the choices to do a TV show over a movie are so good is because you can just kind of faff and fill a little bit. Yeah, you can take unlike, your time. Unlike um, Secret Invasion. Although they take that a step too far. Because they are able to meander, I think they don't use it fantastically because you end up with Ahsoka stares at a lot of things. Mm. Like, she's constantly just staring at things and not looking. And then there's way too much Indiana Jones yeah. in this but not good Indiana Jones, not National Treasure, where Nick Cage is talking through a discovery and like you can see things, you can see the cogs and turning. he's connecting the pieces yeah. for us as well. Instead, you see Ahsoka walk around a room, twist a dial. Can you play the entire scene on like three times not, fast yeah, like forward fast, or something? Fast, fast enough that we don't get cucked. But it's yeah, a long so scene. It's a long time. Can you put the time up right here for how long that scene goes? And then she walks around and does, it's three, it's a video game um, like level, but mm. we're watching her do it. Because it's three dials, and we have to watch her turn all of them to a to something. She turns she turns them to the correct thing. Well, she turns the bottom part, and then the top part has to look at the orb. Yeah. But how does she know what the bottom part has to look at? Because it doesn't match up with the pattern. A wizard did it. A wizard. The Force. The um, Grand Wizard. And then yeah, later on in that same episode, Sabine gets herself a an orb that Ahsoka got from doing those puzzles. And now this orb also has puzzles. Mm -hmm. So then we watch... Sabine does a Rubik's Cube for way too long. Mm -hmm. And then that unlocks. So she unlocks uh, a star map that isn't just a regular map. You have to take it to a an evil planet and put it on a Stonehenge. Which is the plot from episode 9 that everyone hated. But then hated. a witch has to oh. shoot green fire at it. Do you know why there's witches in... Does... No. Um, so the Night Sisters. So, a but like that means nothing to you. No. Apart from oh, apart from a little bit of the Jedi. Jedi Knight games. Like you know of them, but you don't. So like that would be weird as shit for someone that had no idea. What, yeah. Yeah, because other than the Force, which is already kind of space magic, magic doesn't I really guess, exist yeah. in here. Because that's not really physical magic. That's all like invisible. Whereas this chick's just yeah. like green fire and magical holograms. But she's also not a Dathomirian Night Sister. She just. And then it. And then it gives you a star map to some general. Yes, to a to a blue guy, to, to a, a Thrawn. Is he in the? Is he in the show? He's the main bad guy of the latest season of Rebels. He's the smartest general the Imperial ha uh, the ah, the Empire okay. has. That's why he's so important. Yeah, basically. Why like, is he in hiding? He do shouldn't. They go into that. <laughs> um, they should have. Ezra sacrifices himself with those whales, those whales in the space. So Ezra uses his powers of portable animals, basically. He cuts the animals, and then all the, all the space whales come, run onto the ship from it, and Ezra is like holding the force, and then they shoot him out of space into the middle of the planet, and Ezra makes it, and then the whales are just like the planet we were on for most yeah. of that. Whereas, yeah, you've never seen Lothal, like, none of that may, means anything to you, which is really strange. Yeah, none of the show. <clears throat> I mean, it, it made sense as far as, like, a story goes, and, like, 
with Star Wars, like, I guess with like, the, with the TV shows, you're you're getting kind of introduced to new places that you maybe would have heard in names or seen little bits in movies. Yeah, it's a little bit like gloss your eyes over though. Like, it feels yeah. like they spend a big part of the first two episodes introducing these characters because they know most people won't know them. Mm-hmm. But then I don't really think they did. Like, it the pace kind of meanders. And they always like they keep alluding back to things that happened. Yeah, but I don't think they really explained anything. Like, oh no, no, not not yet. And I'm wondering if I'll get that more as I as we watch it. Um, if it's going to be like they slowly kind of tell us the plot of Rebels, which is a weird end. way to do two different. Or if they're just going to stop. Like that just it just means people are going to have vastly different experiences. You said that they changed it a little bit with the story. It of, seems like um, they stretched the time. Basically, like, the epilogue of Rebels is just after episode six, Mm -hmm. whereas because this takes place after The Mandalorian, they've pushed that timeline back a few years. I guess the epilogue of Rebels doesn't go into it majorly. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't, like, specify the time, but it kind of feels like it was a lot quicker than the several years the show says. It definitely continues on from Rebels, but in the Mando timeline, which I think is cool. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would so far. Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact I don't like rosario dawson at all i i like the story so far i think the story was interesting mm-hmm. as far as like where we are and what's going on like the the hunt for ezra i think is a pretty good plot to focus on like that's a good even knowing nothing i like this story more than i liked obi Wan's story yes well you know where he's where she's going like it's unknown territory we're going to get ezra yeah whereas with obi-wan it was kind of like oh sad old man but and now I sad thought, old man I has to I would go love that because it's sad old man that like... But it's been done to death. But not with that sad old man. <laughs> I do love you, McGregor. But like that, like just thinking back to that show, it's like, it was so boring. I've forgotten most of it already. And then this show's already done, I think, cooler action stuff than that whole series that's done already. Definitely. The one thing I cannot forgive is the acting and portrayal so far Mm -hmm. how did the characters feel to you because you don't know what they were yeah so what they are now i hate ahsoka why she feels very like stoic well from what i am assuming what rosario dawson is going with is okay here's your character um everyone she knows and her master and her her trainer and her friends everyone's dead and she kind of has to carry um the the jedi religion on her shoulders And she's probably the most capable person. So you feel like she's overburdened for what she seems like she should be. Like she seems pretty young, and yeah, you, you seem you you feel like she's being forced to be the master so yeah. that Sabine can be the Padawan. Exactly. Yeah. She just feels like the whole time she's kind of just like crossing her arms and being like, "Hmm, I guess so that much, was a bad idea." So much staring. She's and she's like staring. she stares and then makes a statement. She doesn't make the character fun at all yeah i would say that's a blanket for everyone to be honest yeah apart from sabine's little introduction where she's a badass yeah everyone's just kind of cardboard the acting is kind of cardboard except for um uh, mr krabs mr krabs is good mr krabs is good but that's just clancy Clancy brown's voice mainly exactly that's his character his character is his voice and he again his intro he was more because he's barely in it he's mm -hmm. in like a minute and a half but when he is in it he's annoyed at other people or like passing yeah. something and that's on his, so the best that actor can play yeah so that's that's a good way to use him but yeah everyone else kind of just stares Mary Elizabeth at Winstead like doesn't really have other than like a small glimpse yeah that's all I, she did in the first well, she's a hologram for a lot of it for 90 percent of the show her acting the first is also 10, like, a she's in 10 minutes of episode one as a real person yeah and then 10 minutes of episode two um but she's still in like another like 10 15 minutes in between maybe yeah. more as a hologram but she's she's all cardboard uh sabine um is kind of just cardboard um until you want a dictionary for more words nah, you need a thesaurus cardboard <laughs> um, holographic performances um some real but not the cool charizard thick hard one. paper um <laughs> my problem with hera i guess all of them really but hera like i like mary elizabeth winstead but when i think of hera i think of like warm she, like hera is the mum of the ghost like hera has big mum energy mm-hmm. but she did nothing in this like she was kind of in there just to tell ahsoka to go talk to sabine mm-hmm. 
so that we could get a little bit of exposition. No one really has any emotional push in this. Sabine watches a hologram of Ezra and is like, oh, I miss him. I like doesn't say it. Doesn't really do anything with her face. Yeah. But the what we absorb is the fact that ah, uh, he is gone. Yeah. So it's just very not animated. Yeah. The show is animated both yeah. in characters and style. This is not animated at all. And even Ahsoka's fighting in this, mm -hmm. which again the action's like it's fine. I enjoyed the Sith introduction action. Yeah. Like the yeah. like Balin and Co. Their introduction was pretty cool action. I didn't mind that. But Ahsoka is a lot more flippy and a lot more active. Whereas in the animated show? In the animated show. Yeah. Uh, even in Rebels and stuff when she's older. But like she moves a lot more. Obviously Rosario Dawson can't do several backflips. Mm -hmm. That we know of. <laughs> and they don't want to like animate her or like wire her up, I guess. Yeah. So it's very stiff. It doesn't feel anywhere near as cool as the prequels either. Like prequel Star yeah. Wars fights. It's exactly what she did in yeah, Mandalorian, I guess. Yeah, flipping and dipping all yeah, over like, the place. That's because she, she's like trained. She should be that good. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this, she can't beat most people. Like She has tr trouble with that Inquisitor. Yeah. Whereas I feel like she should tear she them should apart. be a bad beat. But yeah. Um... Your Sith poses Jedi, mm -hmm. and then they come and they get the prisoner, which is the chick from the Mando episode. Yep. So if you haven't seen Mando, then this makes even less sense. At least you've seen Mando, so I guess, but you don't remember her because she was in like no, she was in the intro to one episode. Unless they're in armor and have a jetpack. <laughs> no. Yeah, she was kind of just a rich lady in Mando, and then that happened to know where Thrawn was. But they have two almost Sith mm -hmm. and an Inquisitor. And a bunch of evil robots, and they need Thrawn for some reason. Mm -hmm. They need a smart blue guy, and that doesn't really make sense, and I don't really care. Yeah. I'm all aboard the let's get Ezra train, but the only way they know how to get Ezra is to get Thrawn, so they're going to go get Thrawn. But the weird thing about that is that the way they know how to find out where Thrawn is is the magical map mm -hmm. that was in the magical dungeon with the spinning dials that Ahsoka went to get. And now there's there's a bunch of different things that need to happen for this map to show them where Thrawn is in another galaxy. Yeah. But how does the map know? It's like the problem in episode nine, how the knife that killed Ray's parents yeah. is also a map to a holocron. Are we going to know how the MacGuffin got set up? No way. I mean, oh yeah, no. <laughs> that would just take time. Mm-hmm. But it's just weird that they chose that. Like, surely there's so many other ways you can come up with yeah. instead of resorting to magic, like, map. Like, mm -hmm. episode 7 did it too. It's a real JJ thing to do. Yeah. Like, how is there a map to Luke Skywalker on a missing random planet, and why did R2 have that map? And they had... The, the Resistance had a map of everywhere except that one portion where yeah. Luke was. Like, I hate maps as MacGuffins. Mm. It shits me. Yeah. Unless also, how did he get the map there? And then go Thorn Thrawn? Yeah, like Thrawn didn't know he was disappearing, so where to get the map? Also, Ezra had time to record a hologram talking about his plan when mm -hmm. that was a little bit last minute. Like I don't think he had time for this. And he, even Ezra's performance was wooden. Oh yeah. And he was in a hologram and like That random Like give me that emotion. That random guy they called in for 30 minutes of filming? Yeah, Ezra's, Ezra knows he is about, well, according to the show, Ezra knows he's about to sacrifice himself to get mm -hmm. rid of Thrawn. But he doesn't show emotion. He's kind of just like, oh, hey, I know we're not real family, but... More cardboard acting? More holographic acting. I liked these two episodes enough mm -hmm. that I'm obviously going to keep watching, but I didn't... I don't love where it's going. I like the idea that we're going to get Ezra. Like, mm -hmm. I like that we have a solid goal and we can go do that. Because Mando was basically like, let's float around the galaxy and maybe drop you off at a Jedi. But yeah, and I, I like where this show is going as well. Um, I think it's setting up for like a fun space adventure. It kind of seems like they're going out of the galaxy, which is an mm. interesting choice. Because well, if most of it takes place not in the Star Wars galaxy, yeah. you can't really reference any of the Star Wars stuff. I also like a story where they are having a, a master training an apprentice. Because that's on cool. On both sides. On both sides, and the apprentice. They really wanted to set that up. Like mm. they labor very, very hard that Ahsoka yeah. 
is training her apprentice again. Correct. And it's like, oh my god. Like, what do you, what do you reckon the chances are that Ahsoka and Co will go through this portal to a new galaxy, and it'll be Earth? It's never zero. The witch lady says, "I can hear Thrawn calling to me across space and time." Good point. He doesn't have to be in now. We're going to Detroit, kids. We're going to 2004 Detroit. <laughs> 1999 Detroit. <laughs> Correct. Uh. Send him to Detroit. <laughs> have you seen that clip? <laughs> Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! Closing thoughts. Are you excited for the next episodes? Not excited, but I'm interested to see where they choose to take it. Because mm. if we are going to another galaxy, that's interesting. And also... I like I like Filoni's Star Wars a lot more than I like Favreau's Star Wars. Yeah. Favreau's Star Wars is very bland and boring, whereas this one looks really pretty. Like I, we didn't mention, but the show looks very pretty. Looks nice. Looks very Star Warsy. Yeah. Maybe we need a little bit more greenery in some of the scenes. Yeah, I haven't seen any green. LaFall was very white instead of being like sandy, but lots of cool imagery as far as everything goes. But Rebels has a good family feel to it, whereas I'm kind of not getting any character connections from this mm -hmm. like they keep talking about how they're all, three bad bitches they keep talking about how they're all like met and mm -hmm. like like oh yeah i left her because of reasons but they haven't fucking delved into that they haven't talked about that at all yeah also sabine should be dead oh my god she gets laser stabbed in the chest in the stomach qui-gon is fuming han solo is fuming every everyone dies from a lightsaber to the chest except sabine Mm -hmm. Finn got cut in the back yeah. and was in a back to tank for ages. Sabine wakes up in a bed and is like, let's do some science, bitch. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I'll give it a six and a half, but a lot of that is held up by imagery and where it could possibly go. The oh, yeah. The episodes so far, the themselves is the weakest part. Pretty de <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, no, the characters are the, the weakest part. Characters are the weakest part, but the potential is strong, but the current story is boring. So it's like, it's definitely set up but surely you can make it more exciting yeah like give me more of a hook like give me don't show me ezra. i hope they explain why they're looking for ezra because so far other than you explaining it to me i have no That's, idea yeah. where he's gone or why he's gone and also who thron is 